Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 4.19 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with an updated tier list for all 5 roles and give you an idea of what's going to be good and what's not going to be so good. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over the other players in solo queue. Make sure you subscribe because we make meta videos just like this to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at the one thing that everybody can agree that Riot does well, the skins. One of the most popular skin lines of all time is finally making its return. That's right, Spirit Blossom is finally back. I'm not entirely sure which skins will be coming out on which patch, so we'll just list all 10 that have been added to the PPE. The champions joining this universe are Aphilios, Darius, Evelyn, Set, the legendary skin for the set, Soraka, Syndra, Tristana, Yorick, and Master Yi, who is also getting a prestige edition for the skin. As expected for this line, the skins all look absolutely amazing. My wallet is already hurting. Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. We were supposed to see a buff to Mortal Reminder, but that was pulled for this patch, so the only change that we're left with here is a nerf to Eclipse. The change here is pretty light, the lethality is going down from 18 to 12, and the AD is going up from 55 to 60. There is a bit of context given for this change. Eclipse being a lethality item means that it's definitely geared towards assassins, but it's also intended to be an item that fighters can build too. Since it's more damage heavy, it's also supposed to be a little bit more high risk, high reward. But at the moment, it's pretty much the safest item they can get for either class of champ. It does good burst damage and provides both a shield and healing for easy sustaining while going in for trades. The point of these nerfs is to attack that early game damage but leaves the scaling basically the same. Personally, I think they could have gone a little bit harder in the nerfs, maybe by making the passive scale with levels or something along those lines. Before we take a look at our updated tier list, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players that have spent years climbing the solo queue ladder, and they're ready to share everything they've learned with you. So, if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, then you should really go pay them a visit, and they're available 24 7, so feel free to head over at any time. Okay, now let's get to that tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. Quinn has consistently been performing pretty well, so we think that it's time to promote her to the OP tier. Her ability to bully lane is pretty much unmatched. She's the only marksman top laner that can reliably win lane and be able to duel her opponents later on. She's also the only lane bully that does a really good job of extending an early lead to the rest of the map thanks to her ultimate. This is what really pushes her ahead of the early game champions. If you play some other bully and stomp lane, but the rest of your team isn't doing so hot and the game drags out, you become useless and you start to fall off. But Quinn is able to help the whole team out, so you can close things out quickly and cleanly. Shen also gets promoted to the OP tier. The funny thing is the champ himself isn't necessarily that OP. It's not like he's got crazy 1v9 potential, able to carry when the rest of the team is inting. Instead, he makes this tier for his super consistent impact that he has on games. He has strong laning, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most lane opponents, and later on he brings a ton of macro strength to the team. Everyone knows what Shen does, but it's still hard to counter that playstyle. If you ignore him in a side lane, he slowly but surely takes turrets after turret. If you go answer him, he ults to his team and forces a 5v4 fight. Orin seems to always be on the tier list roller coaster, bouncing him up and down between our three higher tiers. Right now, he's picking up steam quite a bit, so we're moving him up to the S tier. Since his last buffs, Set is doing a lot better, so we're moving him up to the S tier as well. The really big game changer that he got was a skin. <laughs> but also, I guess, an increased slow on his E. Early on, the extra soul lets you get extra auto attacks off, and is especially good later on in teamfights, since it can really be a make or break factor into sticking to carries so you just don't get kited to death. With this buffs this patch, we're moving Nasus up to the A tier. He should be more pickable, but probably won't be consistent enough to belong in the upper tiers. The thing is, Nasus doesn't really need buffs thrown at him for him to be good. He's a pretty meta heavy champion. When AD bruisers are strong, he does well, because the combination of his wither and building frozen heart makes him impossible to deal with. Nasus just doesn't do so hot into the current juggernauts and tanks up there. All that being said, I don't know if it's the smartest move of rides above Nasus in some attempt to force him into the meta. Nasus is supposed to be a risky pick. If they make him too safe, he just ends up becoming a no counterplay hard scaling carry that just rolls in the mid game. Hopefully, they stop before they reach that point. It's really hard to say where these Udyr buffs are going to leave him. 12.18 hit him hard, bringing him down from a 52% win rate as a top laner to about a 47%. The buffs he's getting this patch are pretty big, mostly focused at healing and minion pushing power. For now, we'll move him up to the A tier, but consider this super tentative. He could be very easily going back to one of the lower tiers, or even a higher one. Check back with the mid-patch update next week to see where he ends up. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Belveth has been borderline OP tier for a while, and now that Yi is finally getting a very long overdue nerf, we're definitely making that move now. 
Honestly, it was really close before. Velveth has more early game presence, but Master Yi has her beat when it comes to DPS output late game. In higher elo, you could definitely say that Belveth was overall a better option, but in lower ranks, the way games drag out, Yi was just a more reliable pick to bet on. Now, with Yi's scaling being a lot less of a guarantee, Belveth's being a more well-rounded pick should make her better at pretty much all levels of play. Rammus also moves up to the OP tier. Most champions that make the OP tier list in the jungle are the ultra carries that do tons of damage in fights. Usually, tanks are pretty hard capped at the S tier, so they don't typically have that extra oomph that lands a spot here. But he's doing so well lately that we don't really have a choice, especially with other top tier picks being nerfed. What makes him so good is how easy it is to just catch out foes. Early on, he gives good gank pressure, but at later stages, one pick can be enough to secure Dragon, Baron, or even end a game. We weren't too sure Malkai would be all that great in the jungle, even after his last round of buffs, so we played it safe and kept him in the beats here. Turns out we definitely underestimated him. He's doing well across all ranks and has even shown up at the world stage. We'll be moving him up to the rifle place in the S tier. With some pretty sizable nerfs, we're moving Master Yi down to the A tier. He's still going to be a viable scaling option, but definitely not the current mindless auto win champion that he is if he can make it past 20 minutes. Echo's win rate hasn't really been fantastic lately, but it's also not that bad. In fact, being around a 50% win rate is pretty healthy for assassins in my opinion. Sort of like I said about Nasus earlier, assassins should never be a consistent class of champions. They should be higher risk, higher reward, and buffing them to be more reliable just makes them unfun for the squishies that just get one shot over and over in the mid game. So, all that being said, in this role, we think that he'll end up in the A tier with these changes, but that could easily go up a notch. Rek'Sai moves all the way down to the C tier. She's been a super dominant force in high elo for quite a while now, but the lower you go, the worse she does. In plant, she's pretty decent, and in gold, meh at best. We think that these changes will be enough to make her a champion that you should avoid in either of these two middle elos. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. We think the Echo buffs will be felt a little bit more strongly here. It's easy to underestimate how much 10% AP ratio affects a champion, especially when it's both their bread and butter for trading and wave clear. Vex got pretty much the exact same treatment earlier in the season, and it pushed her up to being one of the best mid laners in the game. We'll be putting him in the S tier. Maybe this is overshooting a little bit, so check back with the mid patch update to see how well he's doing once the patch is live. Kennen drops down from the OP tier. He's still a strong early game champion, with his ultimate making him incredible at skirmishing and team fighting. With her mid scope update happening this patch, we have absolutely no idea how strong Sindri will actually be. The changes sound really nice and interesting, but with so many of them, who knows where she'll fall? If previous mid scopes are any sort of an indicator, she'll probably be really broken. For now, we'll just put her in the S tier, but don't be surprised if she's Omega God tier OP. Or maybe she'll be the first mid scope flop and end up right back in the C or D tier. This is a bit harder to place after it changes this patch. On one hand, what we said about Echo could apply here too. Just adding 15% more AP to his E could really push him to be really strong. But Fizz's E doesn't work like Echo's Q. It's still a wave clear, but it's not safe and long range. So this definitely doesn't solve all of Fizz's problems. We'll just keep him where he is for now. This is definitely a pick that we're going to keep monitoring once we actually have some info to go off of. We'll be moving Jace up to the C tier. Remember, going from the D to C tier means that the champion is still pretty bad and not really worth picking. He's just doing a little bit better than other champions are truly at the bottom of the barrel in solo queue. Guys, don't get baited by Ryze's buffs. Seriously, you shouldn't bother picking him. Now, let's move things down to the bot lane. After dominating the meta for a pretty good stretch of time earlier this season, Riot went really hard on beating Jinx with the nerf bat. She's been doing pretty awful ever since, and now they're finally back to giving her some love. I'm pretty thankful for this because the bot lane meta has been pretty stagnant for quite a while now. That being said, I don't think these buffs are going to really make her an OP pick again. For now, we'll just put her in the aids here. I'd really like to see him go a bit harder on the buffs for her, as well as paying some attention to other champions that have been in the lower tiers for a while now. To finish things off, we have our supports. Honestly, I have no idea why they're randomly buffing Sona this patch. With her identity being that of an ultra hyperscaling enchanter, she's yet another champion that Riot really shouldn't be buffing, or at least not buffing her early game. If you want to buff a hyperscaler, buff their late game rewards, not smooth their path to make it there. The results always just end up being the same. Riot buffs their early game, they make it to the late game too reliably, and everyone becomes frustrated when they play against them, and the champion ends up gutted. Alright, that concludes our 12.19 patch rundown. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description link below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, good luck in your games, and may the LP gods smile upon you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.